different for you this season than any other year as far as the feel that's around the team, not not specifically your playing time or anything like that, but what was it that was sort of different for you? Well, one, I mean, you know, to start at the top, you know, ownership definitely changed some things around. Um, you know, you've seen, uh, you know, dedicated season ticket holders. You've seen, obviously, it's a season where you don't have to worry about, you know, are we going to be staying, are we going to be leaving? Uh, in fact, you know, it's a guy that, uh, you know, even was there during training camp and was there, uh, you know, most of the times at, at the home games and even on the road, uh, just giving a lot of knowledge of, uh, you know, where the, where the Kings can, uh, you know, the future of the Kings, um, obviously, the, you know, the arena and, and just, uh, you know, Kings 3.0 and, and the type of, uh, you know, vision that he has for us being players, you know, on and off the court. And, um, you know, going, you know, with the season, it's got to be definitely uh, hands down the most frustrating uh, for myself. Um, you know, starting off with just not being able to control, uh, you know, the situation. Uh, you know, I didn't agree, um, you know, with having pass start. Um, you know, at the four, but, you know, it was something that, okay, if I do sacrifice with starting, because it's not about that, you know, I don't want to start and then not be in the, at the end of the game, you know what I mean? I, I don't mind, you know, coming off the bench and, and still being productive in the amount of minutes that I play, um, but, you know, when it wasn't working, um, you know, with that and, um, you know, and just as a team, you know, we weren't, you know, didn't have that type of chemistry that we were expected to have. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, we were last in league in assists. You know, I think that the ball stuck in a lot of people's hands, uh, certain people's uh, hands a lot. Um, you know, and I don't think we did. We looked at for each other like, like we should, and, and it showed uh, on the wins and loss column. You know, coming out of training camp, we were seeing you do different things that we hadn't seen you do before defensively. And it seems like you were putting in a lot of work. Did you feel like coming out of training camp, going in, and when Patrick did get that starting job, that you felt like, well, here we go again. I did everything I could, and here I am. I'm not being rewarded for. for well, my well, for me, I mean, I like to, uh, you know, have, you know, be a part of a coaching staff and organization that just keeps it real with me. You know what I mean? And I feel like they did that to a certain extent. Obviously, you know, I didn't agree. Uh, with what was going on. Um, I think that they wanted to have, you know, a little change uh, from the past uh, situations, kind of, you know, ha you know, I'm not a, uh, you know, a big three-point threat, and Pat was, and, um, you know, they wanted to spread the floor and kind of have Cuz have more room, you know, because, uh, you know, Cuz, I like to be at the, on the block and, and kind of switch it up a little bit, and Cuz, you know, likes to be more on the block, and we didn't want to clog that up, so. In a way, I tried to make it work, and um, you know, for the most part, it, it, it really didn't work, uh, you know, all year. And it's a shame, um, you know, for me, this year, uh, you know, usually, you know, I'm playing the four, and I would guard the fours. Uh, this year, you know, I was guarding the best big, regardless if it was four or five every night too, and I'm not used to that at all either. So there's times where, you know, I, I could have came in, you know, with the best type of workouts, gotten better in every aspect, but you know, if I come in the game and, and I'm guarding the best guy and have two fouls, you know, I'm, I'm out of the majority part of the game. And, you know, you look at the box score at halftime and it'd be like, okay, I had, I played five minutes, I had four rebounds and I have zero, zero shots and two fouls. And, you know, and after that, it, it was tough to get in games at times. Do you think that's something you can learn from though, going forward? Because if, whether it's Sacramento or whether it's somewhere else, you might get that, that thrown on you again where you've got to guard the best five or you got to guard the best four on the, the other team has? Yeah, uh, I think that it's, um, you know, if it is here uh, with with majority of the guys or if it is somewhere else, I'll kind of be able to already know the experience. This, this was a time where it was the first time I was experiencing some things. Um, you know, obviously it's been similar with having different players come in. I had a new coach, a new system to learn. Uh, a new coach expecting me to do certain things that I may be not have fond of doing. Um, a new offense that didn't feel like it was, um, you know, in the best of my ability just because, you know, guys would, you know, get in a certain, a lot of ISOs. And, and for me, it's like, you know, how I was like my rookie year with, with, or my second year where guys were making an extra pass and, you know, and, and I could, you know, just off of energy and, not even getting a post up yet, I'm already having you know six points and five rebounds just because of an extra pass or a lob or something like that. I don't feel like there was there was that many of you know making the extra pass for our, for our team, and uh, it's tough like that to, to get in the rhythm because if you're not 
you know, for me, I only took, I think, like, you know, average five shots a game. And for me, I felt like I had to put a certain amount of, on myself where I had to make every shot. Um, and then if, I, if, I'm, if I'm the type of player that I think I can be where I can take, you know, 10 to 12 shots a game, I can, I can have a certain type of way about me where I'm not worried about if I'm making a shot or not because I know I'm going to get it again and then I'm going to knock it down. By far, was this the most frustrating year in your career? Oh, hands down, man. That's, and that's like a, that's not even, that's saying it the least. Um, you know, just for the amount of shots, uh, the type of, you know, rotations that we had, um, you know, just offensively and defensively. It just, it just wasn't even a, a fun year for me. Um, you know, I just, you know, there's times where, you know, and, and the crazy thing is the first game of the season, you know, we playing against, uh, you know, we playing against Denver at home. And, you know, uh, I think I only took maybe, you know, three shots. And my third shot was the game winning tip dunk. And at that moment, I was kind of hyped. But in a way, I was just like, you know, I hope, we, you know, this is the, the moment that, you know, can spark me. And you know, we won the game, but it was just like, at the end of the game, I was ha so happy and everybody was on me, but it was just like, I still only took three shots. You know what I mean? And I still only, you know, I didn't do other things that I felt like I, 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 I had the capable ability of doing. So it was definitely frustrating, uh, you know, every night. You know, you've had so many people brought in to that, that play the power four position. I mean, this team, you finish the season, Quincy AC, Reggie Evans, you know, Carl Ander, of course, has hurt the whole season yourself there's so many people even you know Derek Williams and Rudy Gay they could also play the four did it feel like it's just too crowded and you just like there's not enough playing time there's not enough balls to go around because that's what it kind of looked like it, it did at times um, you know I feel like you know I, I kind of go through the same situation like you said ever since I think my second or third year um, you know it, and I never forget where my rookie year you know, when I started becoming starting, I became a starter and was playing with Spence. And, you know, they were like, we were the front court of the Shock future. And yeah, and, you know, <laughs> we were the front court of the future. You know, I was getting a double double every night. And, and it was, you know, bumps and bruises just because we were so young. Uh, you know, and I think that even we were a good team before the trades happened, where we had Brad, where we had uh, Mikey Moore, Kenny Thomas. We had veteran guys that, you know, knew that, you know, knew this stuff. But I felt like as an organization, we were making money moves rather than player moves. And I felt like we, we could have definitely been a good team. We had ups and downs. We still had Cisco. We still had uh, Kmart. Um, but those were kind of like the learning curves. And then ever since, you know, you had Carl come the first time from Houston. Um, you know, you had Sammy. You know, you had, you know, the list goes on. And for me to still be here, be interviewing you guys, and me not with another jersey on, um, you know, speaks a lot just because I never put my head down. I always... Um, you know, took that and just had more motivation. But the, the key thing about it is it's like I would understand if, you know, a guy came in here, even drafting T-Rob, you know, a, a guy coming in here and it's got to be something because it hasn't worked. I mean, every other guy that's come in here, they've, they've gotten traded for a reason. Come and they you, go. They, they come and they go because it's not like, I don't think it's because they want to go. It's just it doesn't work. And there's got to be a common denominator. Like, all right, so if it's not working for them, then got to understand why it wouldn't work for me either. Because if it's not working for them for the past, you know, four or five years, then how do you expect me to succeed? So it's got to be some type of common de denominator of those amount of years, and that's what people got to try and understand. The, the trade deadline, were you surprised at, that you weren't moved? Like, were you anticipating that to happen? Uh, I thought that some, something was going to happen. Uh, you know, I said this in other interviews with other people that, you know, if my second or third year after my rookie year, if, you know, if I was hearing trade talks, I would kind of be like spectacle and be like, you know, why? All that type of stuff. And, uh, you know, I'd be, I'd be upset. But, you know, this time around, it was kind of like, all right, is there light at the end of the tunnel? Um, is there, is the grass greener on the other side? You know, you see guys that have been on my team I play with, and now they're, you know, on playoff teams. And, you know, they may not be getting the same amount of touches, but, you know, they're happy in their situations. Um, so you kind of look at it like that. And in a way, I was kind of surprised. Um, but then, you know, it, once if, you're, if your name isn't in any talks, then you still got to lace them up and, and, and go to work.
Do you think you can forget the past and start over again here in Sacramento and give Malone and this team a clean start going forward? Or do you kind of feel like, you know, whether you're here or not, it's kind of up to them and you'll take whatever happens? Well, I don't feel like I'm going to take the approach of, like, you know, if I if they have not, you know, trade or anything like that, then I'm just going to be like, oh, I'm here again. You know, I, I don't ever take that. Um, you know, it'd be great for me to say, you know, I've had good times. I've had bad, you know, I've seen the bad times and I can have great times here for, for the long haul. Um, that would be the perfect world. But 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 who knows how the situation is. But, um, you know, just with the, with the situation, um, you know, I, just, I obviously wanted to work. You know, I, I have a. You know, I have a house here that I bought. Um, you know, my family loves it here, and, and I've been here for six plus years. It's kind of like longer than a graduation. You've been with it, you know, <laughs> a longer school. Longer college. Yeah, man. exactly. College four years, and so I've been here six. So I kind of like everywhere I go, I know people. Like, they know my family and know everything. So, you know, that's the best case scenario. If it, if it does happen, it can work. If not, uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, and at the same time, too, the communities embrace you. You really, you know, fans, fans, people like Sign Lady, her husband Nico, you know, they really embrace you and you feel like you've become a part of Sacramento too. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's great. I mean, to know, uh, you know, to hear my name called on, uh, you know, 2008 and, uh, you know, just coming in here with open arms, you know, how the city was and they didn't have to do that, especially a small guy out of, a small school out of Ryder. Um, but, you know, I kind of, you know, earn my respect on the court and, um, you know, earn the things that, uh, you know, I've done off of it as well. And, and it means a lot to me. So what's next for you? I, I know the one thing that um, covering you, this is my fourth year covering you. Every year you get better at something. This last year we didn't get to see you enough to really see, you know, what it was that you worked on so much in the summer before. But what is it you're going to take a little time off or you have taken a little time off, but what's next for you and what do you hope to bring next season? Well, for me, um, you know, I think that I want to work on uh, my lower body. I work on my base um, more than just, you know, upper. Um, I feel like that's going to help out with longevity. You know, the more strength you have in your core, um, you know, so I can, you know, get, you know, more, more you know, offensive rebounds and, and, and get better position at times, um, you know, maybe on uh, duck-ins and things like that. Um, you know, also my lateral quickness, um, you know, I think that, you know, being able to guard the four position is tougher than it used to be back in the day. I feel like every four back in the day used to be just your back to the basket or, or mid-range. Now you got the Dirks, you got the Kevin Loves. Uh, you know, they're not the most mobile, but they're at least, you know, out there shooting. And if you want to switch on to a three-man, you know, and you have that lateral quickness, then I can be able to do that too. So there's sometimes when you play small ball and it's, you know, it's uh, uh, one of the, maybe one of the Morris twins or it's uh, 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 Mike Miller at the four, um, you know, and Cuz is going to be at the five. You know, Cuz is obviously going to be on the floor at the five, but then am I going to be able to guard a Mike Miller at the four or do I have to take some of my minutes away because they're playing small ball? So I think that's one of the uh, most important things that I want to work on is, is, is that part of the area. And just, um, you know, just stay consistent. Like I said, I, I didn't um, get many touches this year um, offensively. Um, but uh, just make sure my jump shot is consistent like it has been over the years. Um, you know, I, want, I think one of the things that was down this year, but I think it was more mental than anything, obviously, with my free throw shooting. Um, you know, I, you know I, it's not like I haven't been practicing or anything like that. It's, you know, there's games where I had nine for ten, and then there's another game I had one for six. Um, I think it's all in the rhythm of the game. I think that's one thing I got to learn about is try not to uh, let my emotions get the best of me. Um, as, as much frustrated as I, you know, am on the court, don't let it affect how I'm playing. Uh, and I think that's uh, one of the most important things I got to work on. And when it comes to, you know, the new regime and the new front office, how has that been in terms of dealing with a new GM and Pete D'Alessandro, his staff? Obviously, Sharif is, you know, the one lone holdover, and, and you've been around Sharif for many years. You know, just how, how has that been? Do you get the sense that they've been very transparent with you and 
and, and what their plans are moving forward with, with you and the franchise? Yeah, I think that the best thing about them is that they're really uh, outgoing guys. They're like, their door is always open. Um, and that's really refreshing as a player, um, knowing that you're allowed to talk to them about any topic, um, even if their phone is ringing, you know, constantly about certain situations. Um, and that's the most comfortable that you want to be as a player, knowing that, you know, if it is before the, the deadline, um, you know, is it about a situation for the team or is it about, you know, do, do they want a certain person there? Um, sometimes it may be about money at times. Sometimes it might be about, you know, does a person want to play for the team or maybe they don't want the player to be there. So um, it's definitely all good things. And I, I think the best thing about it is, is, like I said, you know, their door is always open. I have all their numbers to where I can call them at any time. Um, and, and, and it's good information. You know, John and I talked all season long and, and maybe maybe this will make some sense to you, but we would sit in the media box and every time all of a sudden Luke Bamute would get a bunch of playing time, John and I would look at each other and we would go, showcase. <laughs> They're being showcased. And then Patrick starts and Gravis starts and next thing you know, they're being showcased and they're being shipped out. Is it possible you just weren't being showcased because they wanted to keep you? <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've, I've heard that too. But the thing about that is I feel like it's kind of uh, a disrespect in a way. Like in a way it's, it's, it's respect, but in a way it's disrespect because we'll get someone the right to, to just leave me in certain situations that aren't the best and then just so I can showcase for other people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm still, you know, I'm not such a guy that I'm just home, back home, just laying on the couch eating potato chips and stuff like that. Like, I'm there grinding and working, and I don't have to be a guy to post it on Instagram and Twitter that I'm, I'm, that I'm doing all these things. You know, I wanted to show to you guys, just be able to showcase, not just for other teams, but showcase to you guys, showcase to fans that I have been working and I am hungry and I, and I am in my prime. Cool. That's good, man. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, man. Always.